The Turtle Who Walked the Way by Emma Catherine McGugan and Eric McGugan. One day, a turtle was seen getting off a train at Mulgai train station. Mind the Gap takes on a whole new meaning to a creature as small as a turtle, and so a helping hand from the conductor was a huge relief to the little fellow. No one knew where he had come from, but he walked under those arches to the West Highland Way. Where are you going? asked the friendly little terrier. I'm walking Scotland's most popular long-distance walking route. Ninety-three miles, that is, he replied, as he strode purposefully along. Crossing fields, slippery moss, and rock, he reached the top of the mighty Connick Hill. Looking over Loch Lomond, he quickly slithered downhill to cool off in the refreshing water. He waited at Balmaha to see if McFarlane, the postman, had any mail for him on his boat, and then continued on his way. At Salaki Bay, a majestic white swan inquired, Are you lost, little one? No, replied the turtle defiantly. I'm walking the West Highland Way. Do take care when you see the wild mountain goat at Roadenon, warned the swan. He's a very proud old goat. Undeterred, the turtle plodded along in search of the old goat. Reaching a rocky outcrop, high above a cave, he found the goat and asked him cheekily, Why aren't you in a farm? We are a proud family, declared the goat. My predecessors saved Robert the Bruce from capture by English soldiers in 1306, and for doing so, we were decreed sacred and allowed to roam free forever when the Bruce became King of Scotland. The turtle was truly humbled. Be wary, my cheeky friend, said the proud goat. You will find many obstacles on the way. Keep your head held high, your resolve firm, and your ambitions will become achievable. As the turtle walked gingerly away, the old goat warned. Beware of old George at the drovers. He can be an old rascal after dark. Passing over Arklet Falls at Inversnaid, the turtle pondered the wise old goat's warning. Whatever could he mean? Reaching the drovers as dusk fell, he began to feel threatened. I've been told to look out for old George, he said to the landlord of the spooky tavern. The landlord replied, Old George's last orders came at the bar many years ago. He loved the place so much that his ashes are kept in an urn next to the fireplace so that he can be close to everything he loved most in his life. But beware, he can sometimes appear as a wispy apparition and disappear at the hint of a breeze. As the turtle left the hostelry, he felt a cold chill come over him. Looking back over his golden shell, he saw a face shining through a gentle wisp that hadn't been there a minute before. Could old George be wishing him good night? He may only be little, but when a turtle wants to run, he can run. After finding a comfortable place for the night, he set off again in the morning and at all the obstacles he came to, he went over, or under, or through them, or even did a bit of balancing and skipping over cattle grids. Not an easy thing to do when you have tiny legs. But there were always beautiful views to lift his spirits. Eventually, he met a little frog, who was soaking up the midday sun. 
What is that on your back? asked the frog in a croaky voice. That is my home and I am glad to have it, as I think I have got a little bit lost, said the turtle. Don't worry, said the sun-loving frog. Just follow the posts with the yellow arrow and white thistle on them. There are plenty of them. And off he hopped, wishing the turtle a cheery good luck as he went. As the path became steeper and the hills higher, the turtle noticed that the clouds were getting cloudier and the air was getting cooler. Stopping at a farm, he saw a herd of cows eating their dinner in an old barn. Why are you eating your hay indoors this evening? he asked. The cow nearest the door replied, It is going to snow this evening. We always come in here when it snows. It is so much more comfy in here. The turtle's heart sank as he realised that he would need to put on an extra blanket that night if he was to sleep properly. Please shut the door before you go, bellowed the cow. It will soon be time for milking and we do like our privacy. As the turtle crossed the great Rannoch Moor, one of the most desolate places in Britain, the wild winds danced around him and he was glad he didn't have a hat to hold on to. But then suddenly the sun came out, for which the turtle was very grateful as he basked in its glory. You get 20 seasons in one day here, he chuckled as he strode on. At sunset, he arrived at the grand entrance of Glencoe and was spellbound by the wonder of nature. The next day, as the turtle passed Bocoletive Moor, or as it is better known, the great herdsman of Etive, he noticed the snow under his tiny feet as he climbed the devil's staircase. Not a normal staircase, I hope you understand but a place where the mountains rise from under your feet and lift you up to the top of the world. He then enjoyed the long downhill road as he headed into Kinloch Leven. And then onwards he went towards Fort William for the final part of his epic journey. He stopped for a natter with some feeding sheep. Why have you got blue necks? he inquired. When I cannot sleep at night, I count blue necked sheep, which helps me to nod off, the leader replied. With that, the leader walked away and all the other sheep followed dutifully behind. With the first sight of Ben Nevis, the roof of Britain coming into view, the turtle started to become very excited. He thought back to the new friends he had made along the way, all the new sights and sounds that he had encountered, all the many beautiful views he had witnessed, and most of all, what a wonderful adventure it had been. What great memories I am going to have, he thought. As he crossed the finishing line, he met another golden back turtle. Well done, she cried excitedly. You have triumphed over adversity, climbed many mountains and swum in dark locks. Would you like to share a home with me? I would love to share a home with you, he replied with glee. Do you like adventures? he asked. And so it came to pass for the little turtle. He was last seen heading down the valley into Glen Nevis with the other little golden back turtle. Perhaps they were about to start another adventure. Or maybe they were going to make a home somewhere along the West Highland Way. But if you should see his shiny golden shell as you pass him on a path somewhere, don't forget to ask, are you the turtle that walked the way? The End